So now we're going to show parallelism application and how it's used with a profile taunt. So first, here's how the part works. So the assembly starts with a blue shaft, and we put the first bearing over the top of that. And that bearing is going to seat on this shoulder at the bottom here. Then a bearing spacer shown in red is going to sit on top of that first bearing and space out where that second bearing is going to be. Now the spacing between the bearings is not that critical. As you can imagine, the orientation, the parallelism of these bearings is real important for the bearings to run right. So we selected A as this bottom surface where it mounts in the assembly, put a nice flatness tolerance on there. The ideal spacing between the bearings is 1.460. To control that variation, we use profile tolerance to control the location, the height in that surface. Profile tolerance is equally distributed, so you have a 12,000th total zone. That means the surface could be plus 6 or minus 6 from ideal. But the surface can't tilt plus or minus 6, so that's why we add a parallelism. The parallelism is a refinement to control the tilt or the angle. Now let's see if that makes sense to you. So from the top to the bottom, what would be the maximum height that you could have in this part? That's all about the profile tolerance. So the profile tolerance controls the location that would be plus or minus 6. So the max height here could be 1.466. Okay, so let's say that we measured that on the part. One side of the part came in at 1.466. What is the minimum this point could be? 1.464. You see, that's the parallelism kicking in and saying that if one side is high, the other side's got to be high with it. Now, if this side's low, this has got to be low with it. So that's parallelism. You could be high, you could be low, set by the larger profile tolerance. The parallelism is a refinement to could refine the orientation of that feature. Now some people say, well, why do you make it so complicated with all these two boxes here? Why don't you just use one symbol and just put a tight profile tolerance on there of 2,000 relative to the datum? Now that would function correctly, but the problem is you're holding that distance to plus or minus 1. And we don't need the distance to be plus or minus 1. The distance can vary because of the spacing, the bearings being unimportant. It's just the parallelism that's more critical. So I be, by giving a bigger profile tolerance and a tighter parallelism, you can make it easier to manufacture. Machines generally cut parallel. That's easy. It's dialing in the right height that's more difficult. So a greater profile, tighter parallelism, easier to manufacture, but we still get a good functional part. So let's talk a little bit about the inspection on that profile and parallelism. So I put inspection bubbles on here, just like we talked about in Unit 5. So bubbles represent IDs that we'll need to measure. So then we'll create a quality plan. How are you going to measure all of these different specifications? So our measurement plan would say, well, let's do a dial indicator for some, calipers, height gauge, height gauge for a number. So let's focus on 4 and 5. And there they decide to use a height gauge with a minimum of four locations. I can even tell you where those four locations would be taken. Let's do 90 degrees apart across that surface. If I measure those four points, I think we can get a good idea of what that surface actually looks like. Here's our imperfect part, exaggerated here for clarity. And we're going to take our raw measurements from our datum plane down on the bottom. So I measured the heights, and they came in at 1.461, 461, 462, 464. They're supposed to be this ideal basic dimension. We don't really care about the dimensions, we care about the deviations, the deltas. So we convert these to deviations plus 1, plus 1, plus 2, plus 4. Okay, so now we have to evaluate our profile. First, did we pass our profile talents of 12,000? Yes, all the points have fallen within a plus or minus 6 zone. But I want to know more than just pass or fail. How good is it? What is our measured profile value? So I asked for a profile of 12. What profile did I get? This would be 8. We get a measured profile tolerance of 8 thou. Remember, profile tolerance is 2 times your maximum deviation. So if you're 4 off the center, that's an 8 thou profile zone. Very similar to position. Remember position, you're only 4 off the center, that's really an 8 zone. Same thing here. The way we explain this in our standard is let's take our profile tolerance of 12, and it must stay centered on that basic dimension. That's the definition of profile. Then you squeeze that tolerance zone. So when you squeeze that, when you just contain that worst point, stop squeezing. So that's an 8 thou profile zone. I asked for a parallelism of 2. What did I get? What is my measured parallelism? Well, that would be 3. Now, how'd you get 3? That would be max minus min. 
it's like the TIR. Remember TIR, total indicator reading? If it comes in plus four, plus one, that total range there is three. So that would fail. We would pass our profile taunts and fail our parallelism. The way profile is described is that floating zone. And so when that floats inside of the other one, I can't get that entire surface to fall within, so I'm going to have to expand that tolerance zone, and it's just containing those worst points of plus four, plus one. So that'll be parallelism. It's looking at your max point minus your min point, and don't get that confused with profile tolerance, which is two times that maximum deviation. So when we set up our inspection report, you'd have our profile tolerance, allowed tolerance of 12, took up eight, so that's a pass, but our parallelism was allowed two, took three, and that would be a reject. This is a consolidated form. If you want to include those raw data points for 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, definitely include those in the report as well.